first time in ZBrush. Topics covered. Lightbox, navigation, and some main brushes. This video is for users brand new to ZBrush. Instead of getting intimidated by ZBrush, let us forget about all the complexity that comes with the UI. Let us ignore everything, and let's just learn the essentials. The essentials for creating a sculpt. To open a file, we can use Lightbox. Lightbox is ZBrush built-in browser. It's kind of like Finder. It can be used to navigate different brushes, projects, materials, ZTools, and more. This is the quickest and fastest way to load a project. Let's just click on Dynamesh 128 and we can easily get something started up. Navigation. ZBrush has its own default navigation, which is a little bit different from other 3D applications. In order to orbit, click the background, hold, and as you move your cursor around while you're holding, this will rotate the camera. In order to pan, hold Alt, then click and hold the background, and this will allow you to translate the camera. This one's a little tricky. In order to zoom in and out, hold Alt, click the background, then let go of Alt while you are still holding and clicking on the background. This will allow you to zoom in and out. This is ZBrush's old way of navigation. The disadvantage of this is that you have to click on the background. You can't click on the model. So if you're up close and doing details on the model, you won't be able to move around. It'll be very annoying. In ZBrush 407, they integrated a new way. If you right click, you can select anywhere on the screen, including the model, and it will rotate based on where you clicked. This is a great advantage because when you're up close to a model, like I said, it is very, very annoying to get around. In order to zoom in the new method, hold command and then right click. You can select anywhere you want, even the model, and it will allow you to zoom in and out. Again, that is command right click. In order to pan, you have to do the same trick as the zoom from the old method. Hold down command, right click, and while you still hold the right click, let go of command. This will allow you to pan. Always make sure that your model is framed. If it's rotating funky or it's just hard to get around, you're probably not framed. An easy way to check is that it should be just like a turntable. Try to get it to be a turntable. P is turn on perspective on and off. You can also do this by selecting the icon. If you want to snap to certain views, you can do this by rotating close to the angle you want to snap to and then holding shift as you rotate. Again, click on the background, rotate to the view you want to snap to, and as you're getting close, hold shift. And you can also, if you hold shift and keep holding your click on the background and move around, it'll actually kind of like pick through those. It's actually, it's acting a little weird, but you can kind of scroll through those different views. I like to just rotate around and kind of pick my view and then hold shift when I get close to it. And it allows me to get pretty close. Another thing I like to mention is how um, to start your sculpt in the right position. So you want to look for Z. Here's Z right there. You can see the little blue line. So make sure you're in the right spot. You, it's very easy, easy to get lost if you don't have your floor on. You will get lost. So keep track of your floor. And that's pretty much it for um, navigation. Now that we have navigation down, let's talk about ZBrush's main brushes. As a beginner, everyone's kind of overwhelmed with the amount of brushes that ZBrush has to offer. But in reality, they're actually just a couple that you really only need to use to have a successful sculpt. And so this video is really just going to go over it so that people have an easier time when they're starting out ZBrush and they know the exact brushes that are easy to use and can achieve a very good sculpt. So. The first and the main brush that you start off with with ZBrush is the standard brush. Now you already will have it active if you um, started off ZBrush by default and you loaded this project, you should have standard active. If you don't, just press B. This will open up your brush window. Okay. If you want to get to standard, press S. That will bring you to all the brushes that start with an S. And then now 
we can navigate to the T, which is the hotkey for standard. So that would be B, S, T, and that gets you to standard. Now the standard brush is ZBrush's most default brush. Um, I use this for carving in maybe um, eye sockets, so we can carve in little eye sockets. We can use it kind of as a carve brush and to be able to carve certain locations. But we can also um, use volume, we can add volume with it as well. So, by the way, um, with brushes, you can do the alternative or you can use the main positive aspects of it. So to explain that further, if I just brush on, on this model right now, you can see that it's adding a nice little tube of clay. If I hold Alt, it will do the opposite. Okay. So that applies for every brush except a couple. For a couple, it'll do something different. But for most of the brushes, if you hold Alt, it will do the opposite. So for the next main brush, let's go to the move tool. Hold B, M, and then we're going to go to B. This will bring up the move tool. Now, something that I didn't mention is the if you want to be able to change your brush size, you're going to do that right here. So you can change your draw size right here. You can change your focal shift, but this is kind of like your fall off. I usually just leave it at zero. I don't play with that too much. Your Z intensity is the intensity of the brush. So, you know, your opacity kind of thing, the power of the brush. And then this is the intensity of your RGB. We're not doing RGB right now. It happens to be on, but we're not doing that. Um, so I'm, not, I'm just going to leave it as it is by default, but we'll talk about that in a later lesson. For now, let's just focus on the brush, brush settings. Another way you can change your brush size is with the brackets. This is very useful. Please, please use your brackets. I always see people who don't use them. It is the most useful thing ever, and it's so annoying to have to come up here and change your all size. Another way you can do it is by holding space, and then everything is right here, everything you need, so you can change your draw size right here. So please use that. Alright, so back to what I say. Pick your draw size once you get your move brush. And this is um this is one of the most active brushes in ZBrush. This is the brush you're gonna be using the most. I mean, this is literally how you place where you want your model to be. This is how you, these are your hands basically. So um what you're gonna do is go to the front view, make sure you have symmetry on. That's just by pressing X. By default, it's on. That's why I haven't mentioned it. But if it's not on, X is to turn it on and off. Okay. And so now we can start to manipulate and form our model based where we place our brush and do the stroke. Okay. We can move it around, create different shapes. All right. So maybe try to move your model around till you get a little bit of a head shape going. And so, by the way, if you notice, look how I'm rotating. I don't just stay in one spot. I'm constantly rotating the model. Please move every time you do a stroke, every three strokes. Do not stay in one spot. You will not understand the true form of the model. So, you know, just get in there and sculpt it, okay? Get your shapes going, whatever, what you got. So that's kind of an example on how to move around clay with the move brush. But as you notice, I had to use the camera to sculpt it. So I had to move in a position and then move it out based on that position. So as you can see, the move brush is based on your camera. But there's another way to move it. So another way to use the move brush is by holding Alt. I just said with the standard tool that Alt will do the opposite. But with the move tool, it's a little different. It will move your geometry, your mesh, based on the movement. Okay? So for example, I'm going to look right in front of this. Okay? Now say I wanted to create a socket. How would I create a socket with the move brush? I can't. I can only click and go in, outwards, up, down. How do I go in? Okay. So this is why this is so powerful. Hold Alt, and that will allow you to move by the normal. You see? So now I can go inwards. I can come to the side. I can, instead of pushing this based on camera, which is what I'm doing right now, I can hold Alt, and that will move it based on the normal. You get what I'm saying? So that's very important. I, I use that all the time. All the time. So very, very important. And that basically cuts it for the move tool. The next big, big, big brush that I use is the DM standard tool. So press B, D, and then S. This is a custom version of the standard tool. It was integrated into ZBrush, I think, 4R3. And it's a very, very powerful carving tool. So, um, for right now, um, we might not have enough uh, 
to, uh, geometry to be able to use this properly, but for now, just to explain it, it's fine. Basically, it's the same thing as standard, but a very, very, very crisp cut. As you can see, there's not enough geometry to be able to support this. I'm going to do something that not, might not make sense, but I'm going to divide it. We'll talk about this in another lesson. For now, I'm going to add more polygons so that I can sculpt. See? This is very, very, very useful for maybe sketching out your forms, where you want to cut into, kind of the things that you need to get in here, shapes that you need to be thinking about, cutting things up. And so that is very, very useful um, for that. Um, and also, like I said, like anything else, if you hold Alt, it will do the opposite. So this is very good for very fine quality edges. Okay, and then you can always just come back, B, uh, M, B, and maybe place those um, those little landmarks that you were doing in the right place and kind of put them where they need to go. But for the most part, it's a very useful tool. Also, if you hold shift, shift will smooth. Shift will sm If you hold shift for any brush that you have active, hold shift will smooth. For right now, I have too much uh, geometry. Um, like I said, I know this might be confusing. Don't worry about this. Just come in here, sculpt with your brushes, get used to it. But for the most part, if you have a lot of uh, topology, if you have a lot of um, polygons, it's not going to smooth to, um, very well because you have too much and there's, it's averaging too many polygons at once. So it's not really going to change that much. So yes, smooth. I use smooth all the time. It's, it, that's why I use hold shift to do so. Okay. Next very important brush, B, C, B. This is called the clay buildup brush. This is this is the this is the meat. This is the meat of the brush to me. I see it as um, this is what makes it so fast. Um, the clay brushes. The clay brushes are what makes it feel as if um, very artistic. And so what it is, it's, it's um, it's a clay brush that is very specific on its own. It allows you to continue to build as long as you hold and stroke, okay? You see, it will continue to build, and that is very powerful because I can now keep adding volume depending on my pressure of my stylus. And by the way, you need to be using a pen. If you are using a mouse right now, just stop. I mean, you're not even sculpting, so that's, that's what I'll say on that. Um, but yes, please go get a, a stylus and take advantage um, of using that in ZBrush. So, Clay buildup is how you're going to add volumes very easily in a clay-like manner. Um, and I would always say it's, it's a combination of the brushes. You're never just going to use one brush. So you'll add your volumes, maybe, where you want these volumes at, and you need to come back with a different brush. So come back, got your forms, come back and place them where you want. Something very basic, I'm not trying to spend time on this, but you get the point. So remember that, BCB, this brush is specifically when you want to just build up forms. You want forms in specific locations, you want to be a little bit messy, maybe sketch things out, you know what I mean? Um, this is the brush for that. Now, I, I bring this brush up because there are there's multiple clay brushes, and there's another one, B, C, L. And this is the same thing, but the difference is it doesn't build it will only layer a strip. And so, look, I will hold down, and I'm holding it, but it's not building anymore. So that is very important to know, that the clay buildup builds, and this will just put a strip. So they're different, and they, they have different uses in you know, different, different situations. I don't use the clay brush that much. I typically just use clay buildup and just move it where I want. Um, but it's useful in some situations. The next brush, is B, P, and we're going to go to pinch I. Okay. This is the pinching brush. This is how you're going to maybe tighten up some edges, right? Tighten up this mouth right here, maybe. I don't know. Tighten that up. Tighten up um, lines. And um, I use it a lot with um, combination of uh, damp standard. So we'll come in with damp standard and maybe make a little um, a mouth line with the right here, so we have a little mouth line. But the thing about damn standard is it, it, it's kind of, it's a little messy, you know what I mean? So it gets it in there, it's, it's a little messy, but we can come back with pinch, 
Sorry if that was too fast. I just I, I know the hotkeys. I'll have the hotkeys up so you can do that. Um, but it allows you to pinch and get a nice fine line. Uh, pay no attention to these forms. I'm not trying to sculpt anything. I'm really just trying to show you how to use these brushes. Um, I'm not really worried about what I'm sculpting. So um, after pinch is a, a really good brush that I usually use is inflate. Um, so B I N. And so what I'll usually do is I'll make a little line, a little crisp line, and come up with, um, I don't make my mouse this way, but I do do my creases this way. So then you can come back with inflate and get a nice crisp line. So when you divide that, it'll be nice and smooth. So inflate, pinch, and damn standard. Try that out. Um, something to think about with um, inflate that's very important. So I'll, if you're at a very low res mesh, it's really good to use when you're trying to move something in all directions. For example, the nose. I want the nose to come out in all directions, maybe, so that I can get um, a better uh, volume, and then I can just come back in and you know maybe use a BCB and maybe just kind of put some forms in there for clay buildup and kind of just you know see because clay buildup will only push it in one direction, but inflate will allow you to push it in all directions. So just something to think about, something that will allow you to know um, you might need that in some situation. So um, yeah, just something. Um, and yeah, those are really the basic brushes. I really wouldn't worry um, too much about anything else. Don't get overwhelmed. Um, one thing I might like to show is, um, so I always use masking. So if you hold command, you can mask. I don't. I, I didn't want to bring this up because it can, might be a little bit confusing. Um, but if you hold command, you can mask certain areas, and this allows you to not affect that area. So I can mask the maybe the ocular, ocular, ocular cavity, and kind of pull out sections, but it won't affect that that part where I mask. And so that is very powerful, very very powerful. And so I can also invert it by just holding command and clicking on the background. Command invert. That's very useful. And to clear it, just command drag. Okay, command drag. Okay. So now, I showed you how to do mask. Um, another thing that you might find useful for that is you can mask maybe a little certain area, and then you can actually move this out, and it will. You see what I'm saying? So you need maybe a way to create horns or something. I don't know. Literally, that is all you really need right now. Um, and I'm sure that once you get more experience, you will learn all the other brushes. But for now, just use those brushes. You know, you can make something with this. Obviously, I made something kind of you know, quick. And, but I, I'm showing you that that's really all you need to create in ZBrush. You know, people get too overwhelmed thinking, oh, I need this, I need that. No, literally, just come into ZBrush, open up Lightbox, start a project, and have some fun. Don't, don't get intimidated. Try to have fun, and that's that's a really most important thing. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Um, keep doing ZBrush and keep keep at it. Um, it's going to be challenging, but I think really what it's about is finding love in it, finding a passion for it, and to just keep on going with it. You will learn something new every single day. So with that, um, have easy brushing.